The leaders of many women's religious orders from around the world are meeting next week in Rome. Almost 700 superiors general will take part in the group's 22nd assembly, with several hundred expected to be there in person. The week-long meeting will examine several themes, including the response to the coronavirus pandemic, the military conflict in Ukraine, and the Synod of Bishops next year. Joining us now from Rome is Sister Patricia Murray, Executive Secretary of the International Union of Superiors General. Sister Pat, welcome. Thank you for your time today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this meeting, uh, how often it occurs, and um, tell us a little bit about the participants and where they're from? Yes, uh, the plenary assembly of the International Union of Superiors General, it happens every three years. And uh, the participants are major superiors, or superiors general, congregational leaders from all over the world, from every continent, from congregations big and small. Now, the UISG has 1,900 members, and normally about 900 attend. This year, obviously, it's a little bit different with COVID, but we're very pleased to say there'll be 550 uh, congregational leaders in attendance. So that's a very good attendance. Absolutely. And if you don't mind, what are some of the topics that will be discussed and maybe some of the goals that you have? The theme of the assembly is embracing, synod embracing vulnerability on a synodal journey. Now, that may seem an unusual title. But I think we all, including sisters, have experienced and are experiencing vulnerability. Vulnerability at a personal level and at an organisational level and at a church level. And that vulnerability uh, displays in many different ways. You know, we've had the vulnerability we've all felt during COVID, the vulnerability now during times of war and conflict, and also vulnerability at a personal level as religious congregations congregations face the challenges of the world today and being pastorally involved and effective at many different levels. So to embrace vulnerability, it's a very feminine word in a sense, women and sisters we're known for embracing both the challenges that are there, but also the people that are in need. And we're especially concerned for those who are on the margins of life, those suffering in contexts of war, migrants and refugees, people suffering from unemployment, all the different needs that are there in our contemporary world. And you mentioned challenges. I'm curious. Um what do you feel are the overall challenges, main challenges, for women religious around the world right now? And then also maybe what would be considered, you know, some wins or victories? Yeah, I think some of the challenges are the aging profile of religious sisters um, and needing to meet their needs, um, both in terms of their health and their well-being. Uh, that's a challenge th to the world at large, that we w live full human lives uh, for as long as we can, ministering to one another. I think some of the uh, things I want to really celebrate about religious women is that we're collaborating and networking and partnering and being synodality, uh, being synodal both with ourselves and with others. So none of the challenges of today's world can be faced alone. So as sisters, we bring our capacities, but we also bring our spirituality and our prayer to the challenges of today. Well, Sister Pat, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us about all of this. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. It's really been a pleasure.